Hey crew, welcome back to my channel for another flight attendant video. For those of you who are new, my name is Bridgette. I'm a New York City-based flight attendant for a major U.S. carrier. And today we're going to talk about what to pack for training. So stay tuned. First, let me start off by saying if you've received your CJO or you're in the middle of the hiring process, congratulations. I've broken up this video into five sections to make it simple, which are supplies, essentials, clothing, food items, and miscellaneous. So let's get into the first category. First category being supplies, this is anything that you will need to take notes during training. So your notebooks, your pens or pencils, a binder if they're giving you paperwork or anything that you need to keep track of post-its, highlighters, flashcards. If you're a person who does not like to write their notes down and you prefer to type, bring your laptop, your tablet. One pro tip that I want to share with you guys is that I do not recommend bringing a tape recorder because you are going to be privy to safety sensitive information for your specific airline and you don't want that information or anything on that tape recorder to get into the wrong hands. Next category is essentials and this is self-explanatory it's basically anything that you need on a day-to-day -day basis to keep up with yourself um, during training so your hygiene items your soap your lotion your shampoo conditioner your hair care items your skin care or makeup and the last thing which is not typical but it's something that i think is important is your self-care items Training can definitely be a stressful experience and you'll have those days off where you want to decompress and relieve some stress. So if that's face mask, essential oils, um, I wouldn't recommend a candle, but whatever helps you relieve stress, bring it with you. Another pro tip I want to share with you guys is I would research the surrounding area of where you are staying. Check around that area for any grocery stores, department stores, because if you don't want to pack all of these items with you in your luggage, you can try to go to a local store and purchase any items that you need in order to limit the amount of things that you're bringing in your suitcase. Next category is the most important category of training and what to pack for training specifically, and that is clothing. I want to start with a tip. This is not the time to break the bank on purchasing clothes to wear for training. Yes, you want to dress for success, but you have to remember that these clothes are not your uniform. Once you get on the line, you will not be wearing them and most likely you won't be wearing them again. So I would recommend shopping at your local Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington, Walmart, a thrift store, Goodwill, Gap, Old Navy for the items that you're going to wear so that you're not spending unnecessary money. Training is already an expensive experience because sometimes you're not getting paid. Not every airline pays for training. And if you are, it's not a regular pay scale. And you still have to keep up with whatever bills or responsibilities you have back at home. So don't break the bank on the clothes you are going to wear for training. Another pro tip that I want to share with you is do not overpack. I'm going to repeat that again. Do not overpack. Yes, you want to have options. Yes, you want to have enough clothes so that you aren't constantly washing your clothes, but you don't want to pack so many clothes that half of them don't get used and you could have packed other things that would have been more useful. Before we get into my listing, please remember that you need to check the airline's dress code. It typically comes in a packet and they'll break down the guidelines of the color of um, clothing you can wear, what type of clothing you can wear, and stuff like that. This is just a generic recommendation on my part, and you want to check that dress code before you start packing for training. So the first thing is pants. For women, I recommend two to three pants. For men, I would say four to five, maybe six. Um, and your pants need to be full length, so that means no capris, no ankle length pants. The fit or the cut of the pants, I would say tapered or a straight leg, but no skinny legs. This is, remember, a professional setting. The last thing geared more towards the woman is no legging material pants. They need to be regular, casual, or business attire material. Next is something specific to the females. I would pack one to two skirts, 
Length is important. Your skirt either needs to be right above the knee or mid knee length. We don't want mini skirts or maxi skirts. Next item is a blazer. I would recommend bringing only one blazer and this needs to be full length. So we're talking about the sleeves and the length of the blazer to your waist. You don't want a cropped blazer with no type of adornments, no special stitching, no words on it. A plain dark colored blazer, preferably black. Next, I would recommend bringing two to three cardigans, whether that is zip up or button down cardigans. Once again, they need to be full length and also no type of flashy items. It needs to be a plain color. Our next topic is shoes. This is really important and I wanna start with a pro tip. I would recommend for the females and the males, specifically the females, purchasing your onboard and service shoes before training. This is the time that you want to spend some money on quality shoes because you are wearing them all the time. For the men as well, your work shoes, spend some money on some shoes that will last you long and will not tear up your feet. The reason why I say purchase your shoes prior to coming to training is that now you have the whole training experience to break in your shoes. The worst thing you can do is wait until you get on the line and want to purchase your shoes now and have the pain of breaking them in during your first few flights, which are already the most stressful. It is not a fun experience. So for the females, I would recommend bringing two heels, one being your concourse shoes and another one to switch out and interchange and two flat shoes, one being your onboard shoes and another one. Next is jeans. So during training, there typically are dress down days where they allow you to wear jeans. I would recommend bringing two pairs of jeans, preferably dark wash jeans, no holes, no rips, no tears, no words, none of the special designs that come on jeans nowadays. You want plain jeans. The cut of the jeans, you want straight leg and no super skinny jeans. Okay, next item is sleepwear and you're probably thinking like, why is this brought up? So we know what we're going through right now and there is a possibility that you may not have a roommate, but there is also a possibility that you do have a roommate and what you sleep in at home may not be appropriate for you to sleep in with a roommate. So be mindful when you are packing sleepwear that it is something that is respectable for someone that you do not know that will be in the room with you. Next topic is blouses or shirts. Now, if your airline allows you to wear blouses, I would gear on the side of something that's plain and mute, that doesn't have too many patterns, that are not flashy colors, and remember the neckline. You don't want a plunging neckline and you don't want a v-neck neckline. As far as shirts, I would gear on the side of white button-up shirts, especially for the men. If they allow you other colors, like I said, muted colors, nothing too bright. I would also pack a combination of short sleeves and long sleeves specific for the females. If you are going to wear or bring dresses, I would bring one to two dresses. We want to keep in mind of the length of the dress at or mid knee length and the fit of the dress. You don't want a super form fitting dress and you do not want like a flowy dress. That's not business or professional attire. The next thing is the neckline, a professional neckline. We don't want v-neck or plunging. Next topic is sneakers. Like we just spoke about, there are dress down days where jeans and sneakers are permitted. And I would recommend bringing one pair of sneakers, um, something that it is plain, that does not have a whole bunch of designs on it, a whole bunch of adornments, bright colors. If you are a person who likes designer shoes, now is not the time to show off with your shoes. Next topic is off training outfits. I would recommend bringing three outfits that you would wear when you have off days, if you're going to explore the city that you're in, if you're going out with your classmates. A pro tip that I want to make you guys aware about is if you are staying on your training facility or your campus of your airline, please be mindful of the outfits that you do pack because you will still be in the eyesight of the, you know, workers in on that compound. So while you're not on duty, they are on duty and you don't want, once again, unwanted attention. The last item that I think that you should pack is one full business suit. 
for men and women. Something that is business attire, not business casual, because there are some days where they will require you to dress in a business attire and that may be the first day so have a full suit the last few things deal with clothing but they're sort of miscellaneous and the first thing of that is a bag you want something to carry your notes your notebook your electronics whatever they're giving you during the training process to and from your hotel to the training facility and i would recommend now would be the time to purchase your flight attendant tote the only thing is that if your airline supplies your luggage, I would wait until you get to the training center and they most likely would have a partnership or a discounted price for you to purchase a tote from the specific brand that they require. Now, if your airline does not provide you luggage, I would definitely purchase a flight attendant tote prior to coming to training. And a few brands that flight attendants use are Travel Pro, eBags, Samsonite, but the list goes on. You're not limited to those brands and you can find whatever black bag works for you. Next thing is a belt. For my gentlemen and females, if you require a belt, let it be a plain belt. This isn't the time to wear your designer belts. This isn't the time to wear your flashy belts. You don't want that unwanted attention. Okay, our last topic in the clothing category is jewelry for the females i would recommend wearing studs so either pearls or little diamonds like how i have on nothing flashy nothing too big the sizing that typically goes with the uniform guidelines is i believe a dime size you don't want anything bigger than a dime and you do not want hoops now is not the time to wear your hoop earrings save those for your off days Okay, so that's it for the clothing category. Let's move on to the next category, which is food items. So pro tip is, you should already know this, but if you don't, it is time for you to research whether or not your airline provides food during training. If they don't, this is when you need to start thinking and come prepared so that you can have food every day during your lunch hour in training. Some training facilities do have on-campus food options, but that can become costly purchasing food from them every single day. So the first thing I think that you should pack with you is a lunch bag. And this can also be used once you get on the line if you're a person who packs your food like I do. A few brands, like I said before, that flight attendants um, use for lunch bags is e-bags and Travel Pro. You can also go on Amazon and find any black lunch bag. As far as cooking and preparing food in your hotel room, I would recommend getting like a mini crock pot or a hot plate or instant pot or um, a hot logic to warm up your food in your room while you're in your room or for you to pack and take to the training facility. I would also recommend packing a reusable water bottle and reusable plates, cups, bowls, utensils. Now food itself, like I addressed previously, I would research any nearby grocery store to go to and purchase your groceries for the week. Go with your classmates, go with your roommates and purchase whatever items that you need. All right, this is our last category and it is miscellaneous. This is items that I would say are necessary that you don't typically think of that you would need during training, but are a lifesaver. So the first thing on here is heel cushions and gel insoles. These are a lifesaver personally for me. I put them in every one of my shoes, my onboard shoes and my concourse shoes, and they kind of help the process of breaking in the shoe, um, of having that cushion in there. Next is the umbrella. That's self-explanatory. Laundry detergent is a big one. Typically, training facilities have laundry rooms on campus or if you're staying in a hotel hopefully they have one too if not you just go to a local laundromat i would pack laundry detergent with me or if i'm going to the grocery store that would be one of the items on my list to pick up this next item i cannot stress enough pack shower shoes stop trusting these hotel bathrooms for being clean you need to pack shower shoes you need to get into the habit of packing shower shoes on your trips and using them every single trip. Next is house slippers for you to use while you're in the hotel room. Um, don't trust the carpets or the floors in these hotel rooms. They are nasty. Next is Lysol and Clorox wipes. You know the current climate that we're living in. You want to keep yourself 
safe and disinfect any surfaces that you will be constantly in contact with throughout your training experience. And that also goes in line with face masks. The last two things are motivation in my eyes. I would pack my favorite pillow or blanket to remind me of home and family pictures. It is not uncommon to become homesick while in training, but having those little things from home that remind you of home help you along the process and remind you for the of the reasons why you're even in this experience. All right, so that's it for my tips on what to pack for training. I hope it was helpful. Comment down below any items that were not mentioned that were helpful for you during training. Thank you if you've made it to the end of this video. See you in my next video. And as always, stay safe and see you soon.